And hello there, everybody. Welcome to Wise Guys Discuss, where me, and in this particular case, my lovely co-host, Eurostrix, Yo. will discuss a specific topic, um, some news that have come up that we feel is very, very important to kind of give some information and some ideas, um, our opinions, kind of, you know, create sort of a template for some people to maybe follow who may not understand. Um, it would help if I mute my phone too. Yeah, it's so totally to unprofessional. Thing. It's funny because I was very scared that when we recorded this, I was going to be sitting here waiting for UPS to bring my <laughs> Galaxy Eight phone, and I was going to, I was going to be extra unprofessional too, and be like, "Oh, hold on, and run to get to the door," because yeah, I was not. If you but, know how much shit I, I sit there and wait for. Yeah. So. But it will only be slightly unprofessional. I've muted my phone now, so we're good to go. So, big news of the day, which the irony of this was so hilarious, as Euro tweeted me earlier about how we should have waited one more day to record <laughs> the Mouse Clicks and Joysticks podcast, because we were discussing beforehand. We literally were discussing Twitch and how they came up with the new subscription program for um, partners. And after the show, we sat here and we talked about the possibilities of things that they would do, including things like opening up bits to non-partners and things like that, you know, giving people who aren't partnered other ways of possibly making revenue and, you know, doing things to improve their stream. Well, lo and behold, today, Twitch announces their affiliate program. Now I'm gonna give you know swing over to Eurostrix to let him explain to you guys exactly what it is because he can word it better than I am. So, right. so what's yours? To start off with, I want to talk about how Twitch currently works. Currently, uh, there's the normal class of Twitch, which is everybody's a broadcaster. Once you reach a certain threshold, uh, you can then apply for partnership. Partnership gets you a subscription button where people can subscribe $5 a month and you get a portion of that. You get emotes from that. Um, they have a monetization platform where people can buy games or gems from something like Smite and you get a cut of that or people can tip you with bits, uh, which are a digital currency that you can swap out for real money and use on Twitch. So a lot of the monetization and a lot of the issue that has been seen uh, from even non-partners is that making a transition and even how they phrase it here for uh, the affiliate program, making the transition from hobbyist to more of a business or even trying to go full-time perspective. Uh, they put present the idea of a lot of people that really are going serious at Twitch are working one, possibly two jobs maybe. And then the rest of their free time is just spent doing that. Uh, this helps with that. Maybe you can have only one job and still be able to do this because what will be getting into. So what the affiliate program will be is it's kind of like, and I like to call it and have been calling it um, uh, the affiliate junior, uh, the, the partner, the junior partner program. It's kind of like you are on your way to being a partner, but you're still, you're, you're more than just a dude that randomly broadcasts whenever you broadcast with a purpose uh, and you're trying to get to a certain place. Because I think these are like bare minimum guidelines that the guidelines, which I'll get into, um, even though I feel they're a little bit lax, they're still kind of difficult to get into. And we can kind of just talk, discuss that briefly or however long uh, you want to. So uh, first and foremost, you don't have to sign up for this. Twitch will be inviting you manually. So it's the idea of once you hit the, the level, you just have to go ahead and meet all the requirements. Twitch will bring you in. Uh, but what you have to do is at least 500 total minutes of streaming in a 30 day period. So that's a little under six hours. That's about uh, five hours and 20, no, four hours and 80 minutes. I don't know how it is. Wait, 80 minutes, that'd be another hour. It's a little under 60, 600 uh, minutes is 10 hours. So it's a little under 10 hours. Excuse me. My mind and numbers are not working right now. Uh, at least seven unique broadcast days. So seven different days out of the week or seven different days out of a month, you have to broadcast on seven different days. Um, for a total of, again, less than 10 hours. So theoretically, across seven broadcasts, that's a little over maybe an hour of broadcast, uh, an hour and 10 minutes or so every single broadcast, and you will 
uh, or wait, no, an, two hour, an hour and not, an hour. My math is off. I should not be trying to do math right now. Hour thirty <laughs> minutes, whatever. You just have to get a, essentially a little over an hour, two hours per broadcast every uh, over seven days. Average, and this is probably the hardest one. Uh, average three concurrent viewers or more over the last thirty days. And then the last one is a very much a time thing. Uh, it's just at least 50 followers. Um, the followers is probably the easiest of all of these. Uh, if you stream, uh, even for kind of intermittently, you can kind of get followers as long as you stream for uh, a period of time. Similarly, seven days. Um, even if you did Saturdays and Sundays, every day, that's eight days. Uh, maybe Saturdays and then three other days in the month. Uh, you can get seven days, 500 hour uh, uh, minutes. It's 10 minutes or 10 hours. That's not too bad. Um, it's the three concurrent that's difficult because it's one thing to get people in your stream, but to make sure that you have an average of that over uh, over the course of a month can be difficult, especially when you're just starting out. Uh, I find it it's, it's funny because when I saw the three concurrent, part of me was like, maybe it should be higher a little. Oh, and so I kind of touched on that. I think that these are really relaxed requirements because I know there's a lot of people that would argue um, that otherwise this wouldn't be for really like small streamers. This is definitely for small to medium sized streamers, small streamers, especially with the requirements. Um, overall, a I would have liked to see a number even closer to like seven, maybe seven to ten. Not yeah, I was thinking people. between five and ten. Not I to wasn't. push people out, but to yeah. <clears throat> say, like, uh, if you are lucky enough to get a new game maybe a day early and they don't DMCA you, uh, then you could really quickly and really easily get three concurrence over the course of, like, seven days over the course of a month. You could you could do that without too many issues. You'll probably play a new game more than ten hours in the first week if you have the time. Yeah. But beyond that, like, I felt as though... I mean, on my first channel, maybe not, but if you are doing kind of, I don't even want to call it the bare minimum. If you're just playing games on Twitch, you can hit this with no real concern to me for actual growth or trying to promote any singular. Uh, now, I will say this, the counter to that, I think, and maybe this is their reasoning behind this, is they're trying to make it fair to people who may possibly like a game. Like, say, you're big into League of legends um there are tons of people who are very very popular in that directory and you know a lot of the tournaments and things like that are going to take the lion's share of viewership for that game for people who want to watch um and if you're a relatively unknown person you may not be able to get that because we see it all the time in certain popular directories where it's like the the I guess the first to grow in that directory tend to maintain a heavy share of the viewership while people who are just coming in, you know, for whatever reason, just because they like the game or whatever, they tend to stay buried in a directory. Yeah. And that may make it more difficult, even though they're very consistent with what they do. Previously, uh, when it came to getting a partnership, a lot of what it was talked about, was being able to, as a broadcaster, get to maybe the, we'll say 50 to 75 mark of viewership, maybe even higher. Uh, but then it's about be just being in the right place at the right time. Being the person that has a time slot for a game that blows up on Twitch, and you all of a sudden get the influx of viewers. Um, I can't think of all the names off the top of my head, but there are so many people where it is essentially there will be a game that makes you, or a game that gets you partnership because well. of I think we touched on it um, the other day, uh, and or in one of the podcasts, the Destiny directory. Des Destiny was is such an interesting Perfect thing example. Many people, what many people don't realize is Destiny, as as hated as Destiny was, the vocal um, opposition to the game was met equally by a passionate community on, especially on Twitch, that if you were a part of. And you really went from day one and were consistent and uh, were just around, you could get that follow. Without, there, so many of the like people had already established viewer bases, but the biggest people blew up 
because of that game. Um, I think this is my biggest thing is I like the the idea of this because it's to me it's it's a very long stretch, and this is coming from somebody who is is working towards. Well, I I uh, uh, will and for be the first to admit Twitch, being a Twitch partner and be having it be a job is not a, I would say viable career path. Uh, in terms of, you can't just say you want to do that, and do it. to some there's a lot of different things that kind of you have to get right, and you have to get a little bit lucky to be able to do it. Um, with that said, I think this is that intermediate step. I feel like it's a, when you make your channel, all right, the first thing you do is you make sure you get your stuff in order. Then it's like now I got to get become an affiliate. Once you become an affiliate, which I also for those that don't know, Twitch has said that the change, uh, the criteria will change over time. I expect them to raise a little bit because the amount of people that are going to be in that program is going to be ridiculous, especially with the stuff they're b- providing with it. Um, I think that once you become that, then you can start to say like, all right, am I just doing this because it's fun? Do I just need one a little bit of pocket change from it? Um, or would you like to push it and see how far you can go? And I feel like there will be certain avenues, especially with the stuff coming out, that uh will help um push that and help get people to where they are trying to go uh now with all of that said uh, let's talk about what you actually get and if you uh, haven't i'm assuming you're going to connect or link the uh link the page wherever uh you post yes yes Um, we will put the blog um link so you guys can see all the um you know facts and things like that at the bottom of the blog is a great chart for anybody wondering how the different programs stack up with one another. And I will highlight a couple of things because I do feel like they're important because people don't realize this and are going to get, I think, mad once this stuff starts to come out because people just don't take the time to actually read. Um, so sharing with bits, yes. You don't get custom cheer emotes, which are essentially animated emotes, um, but you do get bits. Funnily enough, Black, uh, ha- let's have a conversation about the fact yesterday when I was streaming, I had somebody that came into my chat and said, wait, why can't I use bits to, why why can't I, I, I give you bits or why can't I cheer at you? And I was explaining, well, I'm not a partnered streamer and so I don't have that feature enabled and this and that. And this this idea of people a lot of times want to, especially because bits are, and one bit equals one cent for those wondering about a conversion. Um bits are very much like an uh something that people can buy in bulk and then spread out as they would like to uh, and it's just a really nice system in my opinion um in a way of having things work the next one which for me is probably the biggest even if i say cheering is really good um s- subscriptions you will be able to get a sub button but you will be limited to one sub icon one sub emote i have no problem with that because the idea is just the idea that I can get a sub emote to begin with is great. Also, partners will be able to, because they've adjusted partners as well, will be able to go up to 50 emotes now, which is mind-boggling to think if, you, if you've been on Twitch for a while. Yeah. Um. Uh, next up, game sales. Uh, Twitch currently has a program where you are able to, like I said before, sell things. So I could buy a copy of uh, Rainbow Six from Black, and or battlefield one from black and i'll get a, and he'll get a cut of my game sale because i bought it through him uh, it's a way just to support people as well as like even gems and coins and things from uh, league of legends paragon any games like that any free-to-play games that have some type of in-game currency you can also make it off of that and ads um i believe like what it says on here is coming soon uh which pretty much just means that you'll be able to make money off of ads i want to clarify before people get too happy if you're coming from youtube ads are garbage on twitch they do not make a whole lot of money because it's it's less potential viewership because it only applies when you're live and therefore it, it's a lower CPM. It's a whole bunch of technical sh- stuff that basically amounts to their advertisers feel like they're not going to get as much for their ad and therefore they don't pay as much on the ad. Um, next up is the video tools. Now, this is something that's really interesting. Uh, if you were at Watch TwitchCon, they pushed out transcoding to a bunch more channels. In my history anyway, Maybe it's from the frequency that I stream. I tend to get transcoding every time I stream now, um, even on my lower, really low view count streams. Um, but you'll get priority access as a uh, Twitch affiliate. Um, full access will remain with Twitch partners. 
VOD storage will still be 14 days for non-partners. Partners get 60 days. Um, and you will not be able to delay your stream through Twitch. Uh, for those that don't know, you if you are not a partner, you have to delay your stream, I believe, through your software, so OBS or whatever. You can't do it through Twitch, uh, which can be a little bit annoying, but it's nice to have. Now what everybody, what I feel like is the most um, interesting, chargeback protection is yes as an affiliate. Payout time is slightly longer at 60 days. They've already come out and clarified this. Why is it 60 Wait, days? Just before we go for just roll back a little bit and explain right. chargeback protection to people, because I don't think people understand so, how big this can this is. So imagine somebody, uh, imagine somebody <clears throat> were to donate you a hundred dollars. Um, they can tell their credit card company or whoever, I didn't do this. That's not a good donation. I want my money back. And you normally, if you're not covered by chargeback protection, similarly, uh, if you use PayPal, I'd recommend getting a business PayPal account because I believe PayPal has better coverage for it with a business PayPal account. You can kind of provide them and explain to them why uh, the chargeback shouldn't happen. But you're forced to pay back the money plus a penalty. So if you've spent any of that money and there have been plenty of times where somebody and it's kind of this thing now where it's the joke of if you get a big donation on Twitch, don't spend it for a month. Because that's the period of time that people have to wait before they can charge it back. Well, for the yeah. long, they can no longer charge Give it back. Give a good example. I just got a tweet the other day from somebody. Um, there's a Twitch partner who they're moving and their chat has been donating money to help them with their move. Because people do stuff like that. He wasn't soliciting it. People were just like, oh, well, we want to help you out. We know you're moving from one state to the other side of the country. Here you go. You know, good luck. So some guy decided I'm going to send him $500. Of course, he wasn't serious with the $500 because within a couple of days, he decided to pull it back. Now, why is this a big deal? Because when he pulls it back, it not only took the $500 from the guy, but it took, I believe, what did he say? Somewhere between $50 and $100. So well, it is a good a, percent would, yeah. of that Um and to give people what a big thing was, there used to be people that used to, and this is why I hate the use of this word, would troll really big streamers or troll a streamer by donating them $10,000, donating them such a sum of money that it will break a person because a person will not believe like any of that. Right. And then pull that money back and you get hit with such fees. Yeah, you're hit with, with club. It seems like it's like between 20, 25 percent. You have to that. argue with a company that think about pay. that. Yeah, because you have to make the point of because they're not even just hitting you <clears> with <throat> you have to pay the normal the money that you got any of the like fees that the credit card company would be put on on top of the fee. It's like when people bounce a check. What you don't know is if you bounce a check, yeah. um, regardless you of the check, charged. you're also charged. The person isn't charged. The person can't get the money, but you're also charged like an additional fee on top of right. whatever the bounce check was. Exactly. It's it's a punishment to kind of dissuade you from what they would consider doing false charges when somebody else is making false claims against you. Exactly. Um, so that including that to affiliates, which is a really good thing. I haven't had to deal with it. But then again, with the like I said, the nature of trolls nowadays, people will try to do anything to get a rise out of you. Um, the payout time frame is 60 days. Uh, they've talked about this. They believe that a lot of people, and they recognize a lot of people are going to be pulled into this program. Uh, and so they're giving 60 days to kind of let the system with all the new people kind of work itself out and really get like monetization and money and payment and all that stuff dealt with. Uh, now, here's the one that's really interesting that wasn't talked about, Black. And I don't know if you peeped or, or caught this when you were reading. Mm -hmm. uh, covered by affiliates, the payout fees. Twitch covers them for partners, but affiliates have to cover them for uh, themselves, which means Twitch is getting another cut of the revenue um, because you're going to have to. It's a system that Twitch use alerts and some other websites used to work on where, yes, we will handle all of the paperwork for you. You don't have to worry about taking in a donation here. Um, we'll cover the donation. We'll move all the stuff. We'll pay. We'll, we'll, we'll ensure you don't have to deal with any of the technical side, but we'll take 2% of every of your entire month's earnings. They don't charge you yet if you only earn $0.05, cents, $0.10. Cents. The moment you earn a dollar, they're taking 2 to $0.05. Cents. And so that adds up, especially if a lot of people are using it. 
for Twitch, I don't know if they're going to be able to do that for bits. I would assume they wouldn't do that for bits. I don't know necessarily, but however it works, they're taking a cut of it. And I think people are going to be mad once they realize that they that they do that, even though it's fully justified because there's no reason for Twitch to cover that money. I just thought that that was probably the most interesting one that I felt like wasn't people weren't paying attention to, but would in the future. Yeah. So, you know, make sure you understand that, that you're, they are taking some extra, a little extra off the top for. And then the last few things were just to make a few distinctions to once again, all of these things are coming. And for partners that don't know, you are getting better benefits because of this. All of your stuff is being bumped up with premium features is what they're calling it. Um, but still, uh, affiliates have to go through the standard support queue, which can be fairly show, slow. Uh, priority partner support, they get support first, plus they have members within Twitch. Um, everybody's designated a somebody from the partnership team to contact if they really need answers on a much quicker basis. Uh, you get a verified chat badge, just so people know you're an actual partner and not just an affiliate. Uh, and you'll get uh, something on your channel as well to say that you are a partner, just again to make a distinction and make it known. Um, so this is going live very soon and twitch is going to pull people you'll see it on your dashboard if you're eligible for it uh to go ahead and pull you into the program um and it's moving from there i even like the fact that it's not a uh, sign up system it's something that's kind of automated towards a certain set of goal or guidelines because you don't have to like worry about checking you'll know when you hit that mark uh you'll know when you've gotten to the point where you can where you can um where you can go and you can um, be a part or will be a part of the program. Yeah, so that is the rundown. Now, the fun part of the conversation. Overall opinion um, of this whole system that they've introduced. <clears throat> I love the system. Like, it's... I was... I kind of tweeted about it, I think, this morning a little bit, very briefly... Um, and have kind of been waiting to make a full statement once we kind of talked and wanted to do this. But this is a program that I think is super beneficial um, for the the people, not even just the affiliate peoples. Uh, this is This is kind of like the idea of what was needed. I think a lot of people would always argue that monetization is a big thing um, where with with Twitch and with any of these programs, I always make a point. It's why my issue with the YouTube program, for those who know I have a big issue with YouTube's monetization program, I don't think everybody should get monetization. Um, I think m introducing money that early uh, leads to people trying to shortcut to make a lot of money versus necessarily like working hard. Um, but people will be learning as they come in, but this is a program will help somebody out. If somebody, it it's, Back when I did YouTube far more heavily, when YouTube was able to like pay a bill or two, it was really nice. And I could, it was more time I could dedicate towards YouTube to grow on the platform. Similar to this. Now, when I stream uh, as much as I do, so to give you an idea of how I compare to the, the requirements, 500 minutes a day for me is our total minutes a month is easy. I stream as of late. I've been streaming five I've, a day. I've been doing five hours, which is close to 500 minutes, maybe a little bit under. Uh, every two days or so, I'm doing 10 hours worth of streaming. Um, every night I've been. I want to introduce a morning stream where I'm also streaming three to five hours as well. Uh, and so that this will help me do that because if I can, in this case, living with my parents, say like, look, I this is the blah, blah, blah that I'm making. And this is the amount of time I'm currently putting in. If I do this and now with more avenues, and that's something that a lot of people don't know. A lot of this as well is not necessarily always having to go to outside avenues to maybe make a little bit of an extra. Um, at least seven days before the, at least seven days a week. Again, I bro I've broadcast for the last 225 days, 226 today. Just kind of dated if you watch it, but whatever. Uh, 226 days. Again, it's a matter of seven days out of a week. A week's time without a, out of a month, you have four weeks, 28 to 30, well, 28 to 31 days to get seven out. The concurrence um, for me, luckily, is really easy now because of consistency. If you're able to get super consistent, I will tell you, if you're able to be consistent over a 30-day period, generally speaking, as long as you're on, you're picking the right games, which is another topic altogether, 
the the top three are actually really easy if you're super consistent and the 50 followers is just a time barrier basically which is a lot of what twitch has been doing as of late. when the name changes you have to be on twitch for 60 days um if you stream again all that consistency stuff they all build into each other if you're super consistent on twitch which is really important all of those things will come pretty easily and i think even black can speak to that um of being consistent on twitch you see a difference really quickly yeah definitely as someone who's been very absent seriously absent from twitch which i've been harassed about getting back on i'm actually probably will be getting back on soon because i want to do an irl video sort of to kind of explain my absence to people um that way people will know what's been going on but um you know i know like when you take these breaks you kind of kill your momentum um people will go other places because it is considerably more like i like youtube i think twitch um people's attention spans go a little there's no such thing as a jump cut on twitch yeah it's, it's the easiest thing yeah. i can tell somebody it's like yeah it's like the people come to twitch for that because they get to see a live person in the realest form on a, pretty much for most people a day-to-day -day basis so you kind of become a part of someone's not only just their daily routine, like watching the news or anything like that, but you also kind of make a b bigger connection. It's like, hey, this is somebody who is kind of a part of my life because I get to hear about their day. Um, if you are a good streamer, in my opinion, you're very interactive. So you hear from you know your community, your community likes to come to your stream because they find other like-minded people who they can have conversations with and you know converse about their day-to-day -day things and their interests and stuff like that twitch is more of like where youtube is more of okay let me turn on netflix and binge watch a couple of episodes of this yep. twitch is more of all right i'm off work it's time to go to the bar let's go see what going on with you know and you as the streamer are kind of like the bartender and the community are the patrons and you have your regular patrons yep. and all of that and it's it's a much more you know friendlier close-knit environment so when you're gone you it's kind of like a, when a bar closes well people have lost their spot for a while so they got to find another spot to like become also seen as like Think about your favorite TV show. Most people can tell you what time it came on, all of that. And Twitch is very much the same thing. It's like once you get into the habit of going someplace on Twitch, you'll know when you need to be there. You'll you'll be there and you're there for a while and you'll generally just sit there and chill out and have fun. And even if you're not, you're also, even if I'm not on Twitch, I'm following enough people to where I'm 24 hours a day, there's something to watch. It, it has literally, it's the, literally the replacement for TV, except every channel is literally something that you choose to be notified when the show is on um and i like i like that bar comparison well i might steal that i might just steal that <laughs> um that's a really good comparison but i think this program overall it's it's gonna help the landscape of twitch um to to give you all a very uh broad idea it's i still will argue to the dad die the requirements are too low i feel like my issue with it, I didn't want Twitch to give this message to Black Air. I didn't want Twitch to give it to everybody because I think that I don't feel that that's like right. And to part of me would say, well, make people apply, but then you have to have people checking applications, which is whatever. And I feel like because they said they're going to adjust it, it'll eventually get to a good place. Um, but three viewers is. And I just thought about how would that work for people that only broadcast from PlayStation? Or the consoles that don't really have the same setups in terms of like how their stream even turns on. It still registers though on Twitch because you've, yeah. you've noticed when you go and you look at well, a. They've, they've done a good job of making them more known, but even still, like I'm saying, like what if somebody buys that something for you? You'll never know that you have a payout waiting unless you get, I mean, I guess when you get the email, you will. Yeah, I think that's what you would have to You have to monitor your email. And. 
you still can set up Twitch alerts and things like that. Um, it won't be as visual, of course, because you won't get the visual screen, um, you know, alert. But you still can set it up, and because it is a Twitch account, so you can hear it if you have a computer near you. You know what I mean? Yeah. They say that. So yeah, you'll be able to notice and chart your growth because you know things like Twitch alerts and the thing that you introduced me to, Moxie. Shut they up. kind of so Moxie. <laughs> I, love uh, I love Moxie. Like it's so. Yeah, like you can. You have some analytics that you can chart things and see growth and yep. see like you can in Twitch. They see those things too. You know, they have people who who pay attention to those things and will be able to notice that and they'll be able to get it. I mean, there's so many different tools. I mean, hell, as of now, you still can go on. Um, What's his name? Oh, gosh. It's that old thing, Social Blade, and still pull that stuff and get a general consensus of what people do on a regular basis. So there are ways that they can chart it. So it's not going to be Hard for them, no matter where you stream from, whether it's on your Xbox or your PlayStation or through a capture device. So they can chart that stuff, and you can chart it as well. Um, no, I think, um, yeah, where it's going to be is like finding that sweet spot for that number is where they're going to have to come up with because uh, while I've seen streams that people consistently have one or two. Um, three, if you're consistent, you can get that three. Oh, and that's, I that's something I guess I should touch on. Um, why I don't feel as bad about three is because literally the, the stages of Twitch streaming is you have nobody watching. Uh, you manage to get a few people in there. Anywhere from like, I'll say one to five. And then it then becomes just intermediate growth. You'll go from five to maybe 10 and then 10 to 20 and then 20 to, or 20, 20, 25 to maybe uh somewhere between that and 50 and then you're trying to get to 100 and now it seems like and from recent panels that's about partnership level now which a lot of people i think also miss in this conversation the requirements to become a partner on twitch.tv have also dropped yeah it is not as difficult to get a partnership on twitch.tv now no it still takes work but it doesn't take the work because i remember Jeez, for years, way for back years, in the day, for years, I remember you had to have at least a thousand viewers at one point, or if you had a YouTube channel, you had to average ten thousand views of videos or something yeah, crazy. The, the, over, like the, the old rules that were there for the longest time that people complained about, you they said you had to average between two, like three to five hundred people. You had to stream three days a week. You had to um, stream three days a week. You have to um, broadcast like, and, and that was the biggest thing. The biggest one, the important one was like two to 500 people watching you will make it a job, regardless of what anybody says. That will make it a job. If if even like you get a, say a 20% return on, or a 10% return, that's 50 people subbing to you. That can be a, a solid supplemental income. Yeah, that is income, but a supplemental income. Really quickly, they changed it um, at TwitchCon last year. There was a panel. Uh, for those who don't know, I'm a big fan of panels, as well, uh, which we might get into when it comes to TwitchCon and convention season. I may like hit you with some panels that I just think would be interesting topics to go off of. Uh, but Twitch has made a a, co- uh, a statement saying at the pa- at the TwitchCon panel, partnership right now is about a hundred or so f- over the course of a month long period, and I think people need to hear that. If you can keep around 100 or close to 100 in a month long period, Twitch will look at you. But their partnership guidelines have expanded to simply say an established and steadily growing uh, audience in chat, a regular broadcast schedule of at least three times a week, and content uh, that conforms to our rules, conduct, terms of service, and DMCA guidelines. Those are the current um, guidelines, which are really vague, which I think this is the first step to kind of clarifying those. Like, well, but I, in a way, I kind of like the vagueness, and that was part of my whole feeling on this whole thing, where they're making the affiliate program about invitation only, not like you hit the mark, you can apply. Where like you know, group—that's what YouTube had. 
long as you hit a certain mark, you can apply. Or with AdSense, you can just apply off the back, and it didn't matter. Um, I like the fact that they get to choose who because you can go in there and you can have all these consistent numbers. You can get 50 viewers um, every time and all of that. But they're still going to be checking yeah. for certain things that you do and how you present yourself and so, things like that. They're not, you know, they're to me. I feel like they're doing what you should, YouTube should have did from the jump, and this way they wouldn't have alienated so many people and there wouldn't be so many hurt feelings. Apply the rules from the beginning. And for yeah, for those that don't know, people <laughs> used to get mad because uh, there used to be a situations where people that had. Very small viewerships got got, got sub buttons, um, and people always said it's a more of a who you know situation, um, which in any job it's kind of like a recommendation. And you know like, that can happen. Then that's going to happen in everything. I mean, I've yeah. seen some people who got sub buttons because they know certain people. Um, it hasn't that's life. In a long time. It hasn't happened as much in a long time. Yeah, it does. It's not. Yeah, it's not as huge, but it's that's life. I mean, shit. You, yeah. Wouldn't you put your friends on if you could? So, hey, uh, let's let's that 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 doesn't bother me really. Um, it it would bother me more like a, like we were saying about YouTube. The whole, yeah, I got a with YouTube partnerships became kind of a joke because I could even say, in my case, I got a YouTube partnership where I probably shouldn't have never got one. I just applied just yeah, as a joke. Days, yeah. And they gave it to me. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, and I wasn't doing and I, you know, I don't do enough in my mind to justify that. But that's how YouTube became because it was all about that company getting that CPM, that ad revenue. Um, and that's that's the thing. But YouTube, you got ad revenue regardless, as long as you signed up for it. So it was like everybody was rushing to do YouTube because if you could push your numbers higher and higher, you get more ad revenue. And YouTube was very, YouTube was very lax with what you can do content-wise. Um, as for all the strikes and things that people got for certain things, there's a lot of shit on YouTube that you should never ever be able to monetize and get ad revenue on. And there's a lot of like culture and a lot of different things that spawn from that. You know, the whole um, drama culture, the whole exposed culture and things like that. It, it, all of that stuff, you know, that was the wild, wild west. And now YouTube is trying to become a more streamlined, quote unquote, professional environment. And of course, people are raging. Twitch is trying to do it the opposite way. They're trying to, they're they're building a structure. First. So for those that don't know, this all of this was probably already in the works back when the like guidelines for the changes of attire that have to be worn, all the small little rules and uh, rules of conduct in terms of service uh, pieces changed, and how Twitch has slowly been, in my opinion, <clears throat> they want to make it easier for people to transition from a. A, something from a hobby into a possible career and that's the difference i think youtube has never youtube uh has never had the intention of this of your channel being your career even though they offer it i don't think it's ever been an actual thing that they have ever um worked towards yeah it They'll definitely wasn't content yeah. to con to creators but never to like you know actually be a uh, a full-on career where you can there are reasons why you can do certain things twitch on the other hand seems to be moving towards that path the affiliate program is to say look we see that you're working hard here's a chance to earn some revenue if you continue to work hard if you continue to grow if you continue to be passionate pursue um and go above and beyond there is still a chance of partnership which is the next step to possibly making this profession it's like they're setting up something of a roadmap for if you want this to be a possible career um then it's possible it's 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 far more possible to, in my opinion for on a twitch side of things especially because of the age of the platform a bunch of other things in general uh, but especially with what twitch is doing twitch is a platform to me 
not even of the viewers, but of the content creators on the platform. And that is what I've always appreciated about uh, about um, Twitch. Yeah, I, I just feel like with YouTube, and I think a lot of people didn't really think about it. Seriously, like in hindsight, I don't think any of us did because we all just saw, wow, you can blow up and make money off of this. Well, that was a lot of people's attitude. Well, this is a great way to blow up and make money. It, all I have to do, like, especially when the gaming thing popped off, everybody was like, all I have to do is just play video games. And post the it. Is people don't remember, really remember what it was like. It used to be a big deal to get a YouTube partnership. Because yeah. YouTube picked who they wanted. Like cherry picked, like you're the person that's coming to our program, and you get this, and you get this, and as it's it's something like that's where this now is. It's not a hey anybody that comes in the door hears this. It's a. It it's 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 that that. It's basically a way of saying we notice that you're out here working hard. Yeah. Here's and that's the biggest thing that has made this such a great thing for me. It makes me feel as though. The fact of the extra hours. They put a video on the page. Um, but I guess the simplest thing. To me, the simplest part is streaming. If you really want to grow on Twitch. The simplest part is sitting down and streaming for yeah. X amount of time. After that, there's reading analytics. There's checking emails. There's uh, networking with social media um, and just social media use in general. There's so many things that extend beyond the stream. that, And it's something that briefly I've talked with my parents about of where there are when I worked at GameStop this this past holiday, the amount of stuff I had to do at GameStop was less for n more money, obviously, because I'm not doing this as a job. But at the same time, once I left GameStop, I was I was done. Twitch is very different. Twitch is kind of like you can work as much as you want and you see returns based off of that. Maybe if I'll do this, like if I whenever I get to a, a certain point, I will kind of pull as much of my analytics as I can. To actually show people, and maybe we can talk through that of like what actual like and go through like what the actual curve and what the actual timeline looks like yeah. of just my channel, which every story is unique. Some people the fir their first stream blows up. Maybe there's the right place in the right time. Other time, there's plenty of stories of people being denied for years from partnership until they get it. Yeah, no, I mean it's it's a it's a grind. But and I think this is the thing that I wanted to say the most as important because as I keep the reason I keep bringing up the YouTube thing is because I need people to understand that you should not treat this how you treated YouTube. Exactly. Again, when YouTube um, started to do ad monetization on anybody's videos and then started allowing affiliate programs to come in and you know do partnerships so there'd be a three-way split between things and so they had these recruiters out here coming at people it's like hey you want to get a partnership we'll give you some money and you know they'll give you like you know a certain percentage and things like that even though your percentage was also after a certain percentage was taken from youtube you know not saying that it was like they were partnering people very fast. They were giving people the means to make money. And they developed this environment where people would do anything to get to that point where they can make like tons of money. They put a lot of false hope in a lot of people's heads mm -hmm. with that whole structure. And then they realized, yo, we've created an environment that has gone nuts. We have too many people doing too many different things, too many people doing things that um, if we as a company want to grow and make maximize our revenue, we got to start installing some rules. We got to start becoming a more focused company to decide where we want to go. That's why there's YouTube Red. They want to have more like of their own personal programming. They want to have with these new rules people doing more quote unquote professional content stuff that they can take to advertisers and advertisers can treat like they treat tv shows and things like that they don't want your crazy 
drama filled stuff anymore. They don't want, you know, I keeps it real type of things anymore because they want to maximize their money. And to them, that doesn't maximize money. It did before because, hey, who cares? All of you guys are just making videos and you're not caring that the fact that we're getting the larger cut anyway. Well, now is different times. People have different means of going and seeking ad revenue and doing things. YouTube is not just the only place to do that. And a lot of companies are like, you know what? We don't want to associate with this environment until you clean it up. YouTube's cleaning it up. Now everybody's pissy because you all flooded this thing and everybody was out there like, yo, I'm going to get paid. I'm going to get paid. I'm going to get paid. With Twitch, this is not going to be the same situation. Don't think just because they're letting people who are not partnered now be able to make revenue that this is their opening to that whole, okay, everybody jump on board and start streaming because you're going to make a ton of money. They've already told you, you're not getting a high percentage right. of money from this. You know, They're giving you a couple of different benefits like the emote and things like that to make you stand out more and hopefully help you grow. But beyond that, it's not a setup for a huge payday. You're not setting yourself up for this run to that quote unquote silver button. More importantly, what they're doing that YouTube should have done all the time was they are keeping it to themselves. They're writing the rules. They're regulating everything. They're not going to outside sources and letting them come in and try to make money off of this too. They're no, it's a relationship between them and their streamers. That's how they want it. And I think that's how they're going to always keep it. Um, it helps to the fact that they already are owned by a company like Amazon, which isn't going to let you run amok. So they're going to keep that in check. Don't think that it's ever going to get like, you know, the quote unquote good old days of YouTube. No, it's not happening. This is another safe bastion for all of you pissed off YouTubers to run to now to try to set up shop. So don't think that. Streaming is something that is much, much harder, in my opinion, than doing YouTube. I know a lot of people like to say, I got to do all this editing and all of this stuff. You know what? All the editing stuff makes your job easier because while it seems like a lot more work, bottom line is you can tailor your image to whatever you want. You can streamline things and make it look as presentable as possible to maximize your visibility. With streaming, yeah, you can get all the fancy cameras, you can get all the fancy devices, but it's all about you and your relationship with your community. To, to any YouTuber out there that will talk about streaming being simpler, um, let, let's take it to an extreme because that's what generally people start to understand. Like the very simple idea would be like, imagine uh, making a video, but you have to keep somebody entertained perpetually for like six hours or even a couple of hours at a time. That's not the culture of YouTube. The extreme is shout out to my dude, Mavitek. He streamed for 34, 35 hours straight, talking 99% of the time. Could, could you even think of doing a piece of content like that? To where you do an entire playthrough of possibly a game, and not even a small game. And you're able to maintain with, with no cuts. The most cuts you get maybe would be the equivalent of a bathroom break. Could you handle that? And that's why I think Neither one is necessarily easier. They require very different skill sets to be good at. Um, but I feel like it's generally written off as being a very <clears throat> easy thing to do to stream games where the amount of time I've had people like, and you'll see people that just be like, yeah, X was boring. And so I came over here or, all right, well, I got some stuff to do. I'll be back later. Or there's this and that. And the thing is when you have, like we were talking about before, one or two viewers, that's a the difference between having no viewers, having one viewer, and having five viewers on Twitch in any directory is thousands of people. Literal thousands of people of your placement. Um, as long as I mean, barring a game that nobody else is playing. Yeah. 
And see, another thing is like with YouTube again, the view count can it goes up, it goes up, it goes up because anybody can click on that view. And yep. so when you look at that view count, and you're frustrated. You're like, oh, I need to make another channel because I'm not getting you views. You you can't really do that with Twitch. You you can't pull that maneuver. You should you're again. It's all about you and your relationship with your viewers. So exactly. if you only have one person in that chat. You know what you need to do? You need to dis you need to talk to that person. Yep. You need to build a relationship with that person. Then that person will come back. And maybe that person will tell his friend, yo, this is a cool dude. And he's funny or he's entertaining. Or maybe he's there watching and he thinks you're really good at the game and is learning stuff from you. And he'll tell other people. And then they'll come in and then you speak with them, you build a relationship with them. Twitch is not again. That's simple because I can make a video, say what I feel, be real, all of this. And if you agree with it and hit like, that's fine. But me having to actually speak with you directly and create a vibe, that's something hard. Not a lot of people are good at making those connections. It's much easier to sit behind this microphone, like how right now we don't have cameras on. You don't see what I'm doing, how I look, whatever. I have a mask. We were just talking about how hot it is right now. Huh? We were just talking about how hot it is before we went live. And just yeah, exactly. You know, you, you have a mask. It's, it's, it's a sort of a mask. And YouTube is definitely a huge mask. But Twitch, even if you don't have a camera, you still have to project your personality your aura who you are and people will vibe off of that and if you're going to be there and be pissy and not talk to nobody because you only got one or two people you're never going to get more than that ever you may end up being with zero all the time because you're not trying to engage you're thinking if i play do this like on youtube if i just do this i can get people to watch no it's not no you have to work and I think you, the, the exponential kind of growth that you talked about is really important. On Twitch, you literally only grow if you're if you're actively on the platform. YouTube, you can post a video and it will get views over time. Yeah. The city, yeah. forget it. It's a, um, what is that? A slow cooker. YouTube can be a slow cooker in a lot of senses. It, it may not always. Yeah, no, I can tell you out. there's been a couple of videos that I've put out didn't get anything initially and like hell a year or more later all of a sudden boom why is this at the top of my goddamn analytics i made this video back in 2014. why everybody why, why because it it hits it because of youtube certain things if it gets enough views it starts to hit you know whatever algorithms and things that youtube have and then they're gonna push in this group in this pool where it'll be in suggestions and things like that. Twitch don't happen like that. Twitch now has a little bit more as far as suggestions. If you've noticed on the left panel, they'll show people who friends of yours have watched or people who you follow have watched and maybe, you know, have similar content, but it's not like YouTube where YouTube would just string everything along with similarities. So your shit can be pulled up to the top. Um inorganically twitch no you have to be do the most work in pulling yourself up it's all on you it's all it's it's totally you it is how much you're dedicated to this and if your only dedication is i'm gonna get paid you're fucked <laughs> because that's not going to work that way it's not that simple the, the difference between um and that's another difference i guess i don't know if you hit on it specifically on youtube you get paid if you might just you get a penny or a quarter out of somebody's pocket and they'll guess when they watch your video like it's kind of like they put it in a vending machine and see if they like what they get on twitch you got to convince the person to take it out of their pocket and hand it directly to you yeah which is imagine again imagine that dude sitting on the edge of the street just like hey can i hold can i can i get a five dollar bill or a dollar how much harder is it for you to do that than to use a vending machine I'm just saying think think about that like different platforms require very different i'm i'm really happy about this the affiliate yeah. program is also created and surprisingly i wanted to bring it up earlier on twitter 
the the requirements have been a already become a kind of issue of contention because some people a lot of people are saying like anybody should be able to get should be able to have it and to some degree i under i understand that if you entertain some, anybody you should be able to have it and especially for people that and that's where i believe like case by case basis should exist because maybe there is somebody that doesn't have the time but still can fit, fit certain criteria enough to give them the uh bring them into the affiliate program um rather than necessarily like you find a guy that is you can tell is doing everything in his power to get into the affiliate program even though but he might not be able to stream seven days a week but he's hitting that 500 hours sometimes i feel like those conditions should be a little bit flexible like if you hit 500 minutes which is about eight hours if you hit eight, eight hours of streaming in a month but you don't necessarily hit um seven days that shouldn't be an issue. Like, don't make it that rigid. Or if you have maybe, maybe you only stream 250 hours a month, but you get 10 people in chat. The only one I think that matters is like, you have to have 50 followers. Cause I don't think that that takes too, that, that's like the easiest requirement. I mean, it's it could time take a little bit, but, but it's, it's, it's time gating essentially. Like they, they yeah. it's one of those things that's just to say, like, look, you're not just going to make a Twitch account and get all of this stuff. Because I think to some degree that also dissuades people from, maybe I have a bad image on my channel and I want a new channel with all this stuff that's happening. Let me just make a new channel and I'll get all of it. Yeah. Yeah, no, you, Twitch building, when you build up a community, because people can delete channels on um, YouTube and come back all the time. You, you destroy a community on Twitch, you're kind of dumb. Um, if you want to build your thing back up, you need to do what you need to do to gain people's favor again. Again, it's all about you. Twitch does not forget. No, they don't. I can tell you so many people that have essentially gone and been put off, have left the platform because of, uh, like just bad decisions, uh, a lack of care. Uh, when it comes to um, a lack of care, when it comes to like pushing ideas or 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 pushing what they say, well, fuck you then. Why should I fucking care? All right. Well, maybe you start saying that more often than you actually should be. Yeah. yeah no. Um. Then this is the reason why I want to do this video because I want to express that point. And I wanted you guys to understand this because I know there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be rubbing their hands like Birdman. And it's like, yeah, nah, son, it's not going to be that simple. You know, like really, really have, you have I think with being a streamer, especially on Twitch, because um, even streaming on YouTube is different because, again, after you stream on YouTube, you have that um, video that's already monetized. So YouTube makes streaming even 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 easy. It's just like pff, I don't need a partnership because I can get AdSense over that too. The but audience they, for it is also extremely different because you're playing with a YouTube audience versus um, a yeah. pure live streaming focused audience. Yeah. So, but you have to love doing it. I think, and that's the thing. You have to have passion. You have to have the mindset for it. Um, you know, you have it. You can't just have that. Okay, let's get paid mentality. You can't just and look at it. That, that's something that I think I tell. I have talked to people about, but I want to stress it here one more time in case you don't understand what we're already saying. All right. Do not do this job because you want to make money. Do not do this because money is your focus. Because I will even tell you, you can work a general minimum wage, nine to five, work less, and have far less stress when it comes to dealing with certain things than you would with trying to say, I'm going to make this work and this job and this job and all these other things. Like, just trust me when I say, in general, you will work probably on average uh, if you really want to 
quote unquote do this, regardless of what job you have, you're, you're gonna have another 40 to plus hour, maybe 60 hour a week. Yeah, definitely. Um, but for those of you who really love streaming, who have fun with it, or like it, it it's a good it's a good step for you because it encourages you to do something that you love more. Um, knowing that you can work because a lot of people, honestly, I can tell you this, and I've heard this from a lot of people who have watched over Twitch. The monetization part isn't going to necessarily be the drive. Like. I want that damn icon. I, I think I'm when I come back to streaming regularly, my goal is that damn um, emote. Seriously, because I like the f idea of having my own like identity. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's cool. I think emotes are the coolest thing in the world. Um, yeah. Oh no! Like, <laughs> I want people to understand. I subscribe to people for emotes. Like, I see a cool emote in the chat, and I'll say like, "Yo, whose emote is that?" And you're like. I might let me go watch their streams. Let me go check them out. May, maybe I might just subscribe for these emotes. You know, and it's just things like that. It's like the the badges now that they have, where you you know you get that badge to show that you are a part of a community, or how now they tier it the badges in colors, where they show how long you've supported and things like this. it's it's Which again it's such a community based thing. It makes you feel like, yo, I'm a part of something. Have I ever told you, Black, that my old Twitch account, for the longest time, I kept using because I made sure that I did not want to lose my loyalty badges. <laughs> oh, no, it was just, and it's, it's something small. People be like, well, why should you care? I'm like, it says something to me to be able to look at it and be like, yeah, two years. So many people for two years. I've I've supported them and it makes me feel good. It's not anything for necessarily the streamer, but for me to be able to be like, yeah, I've been around this long. And it it, it makes me happy because you don't always remember just how long you've been with some people. Yep. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna say names, but somebody just like I know, and you know who this person is. <laughs> they just went on a rant like, God damn it, I've been with this person for two years now like i keep saying i'm gonna unsub but i just can't <laughs> and they you know get the shout out from the person every time they watch it it's like wow really i've been here this long. but it's like you kind of forget because you don't mind paying that money especially if it's somebody that you appreciate their stream yeah and you like the idea of knowing that you giving support to somebody who's doing something that they love Exactly. And who's genuinely doing something to entertain you, not just, you know, again, it, it's it's the difference between the whole YouTube vibe and the Twitch vibe. You can there are a lot of people out there and we've heard the discussions. We've heard the arguments about different people who people think are just, you know, being fake and phony and stuff like that. It, it's it's very hard to be disingenuous, in my opinion, on Twitch. Um, it doesn't last long. Um, certain schemes and tricks that you would do on YouTube don't really, really work. It gets exposed quick, and you can tank yourself um, easily. Uh, so, And it can be stressful, because if you're somebody who's found out to be doing something fucked up, Again, remember, you're live, you're exposed, you're out there. So people will come at you and they will attack you and you can't hide. You can't do a video talking about how, oh, you're just haters and all that. No, they see the look on your face right now. They know yeah, that, that like, just... there's so many things that you can just. I feel like people, the people that like people on Twitch, you get to like see like people when a lot of times they're comfortable. You don't you don't just get the person you get a lot of comfortable like when when they're not when the cameras they even if the cameras might not be on and I think there's an entire different conversation there that you could have about that not necessarily being a good thing but God is it so different I can't just sit up here personally and say like nah fuck that like this is 
oh well fuck you you're an asshole i have to like even if it's a situation i don't like which comes up i'm not gonna pretend like it doesn't because there's not, <laughs> it's not a perfect world it's not a perfect world where everything uh. i had a person that came in my chat yesterday that was named i hate and it starts with an n and ends with an uh er and they spelt it creatively to get around uh the the like normal banning system and i could have just fuck you this that the other but even still i tried my best to be a little bit civil i would just be like look and i because i don't want to assume anything about somebody so i'm like look i i get that you may have been a troll at one point but i'm gonna ask you really change your name their name changes on twitch now you can change your name and you'll be fine go ahead and do that and like the guy kept being like, and he would like to be like, no, no, this is the my father's account. And eventually it got to the point where I was like, all right, go ahead and ban him. But the thing that people could see is that I gave it a try. Or that I put in the effort to, I'm not trying to just be like, well, fuck you then. It's this idea of you have to be, people will see if you care enough to do that. And some people are perfectly fine with you saying, no, nah, fuck that dude. He can go suck a dick. Yeah. And it's about like you as a person and kind of figuring that piece out. Yeah. Figuring that piece out. Yeah, uh, I think that pretty much just about covers everything. Like we said now, we always do uh, our, we of course, if you guys have any questions, feel free to hit us up. Um, I will. Leave. I love talking about this stuff. Yeah, and again, this video is not going to just be on this channel. I'm going to share it on my personal channel, the Black Vegas. Um, Euro, if you want to share it on your channel, on your Twitch, you know, as an upload, oh, that's um, a great idea. things like that, uh, Patreons, whatever, I, whatever avenues I have, I'm going to post this because I think the people definitely, um, would like to hear conversations about this and get an idea of what it's about, because there are going to be people who are going to do a lot of things that are just going to be about the excitement of this or about how much they hate it. I think people need more than just a reaction video. I think people need to actually hear and understand what is going on, what the benefits are, what the negatives are, how Twitch works and things like that. Because a lot of times um, people get into these things and they have bad experiences because they, didn't, don't, they don't have any understanding. And there's no one around to try to help. And me and Euro, we like to help as many people as possible. So hopefully this video will be helpful to you guys. Um, that being said, make sure to check out Euro Strix every night from 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time as he and his chat goes down the long road of lewdness and craziness as they also pretty much troll the hell out of him as he dies repeatedly in certain games, such as Dark Souls, Bloodborne, and um, Battlegrounds. More recently, yes, Battlegrounds. Yes, Battlegrounds has been the hotness on his channel. Check that out. Um, and, of course, he has his own podcast on there, um, SSJ Lounge. Check that out. Um, his, in, you know, in real life videos, all of that. Uh, very entertaining gentleman. Be sure to have fun and do whatever. Yeah, so definitely check that out. If you want to, like, further get some understanding of Twitch, and, you know, he will answer questions in his chat, so feel free to have those discussions with him there, too. Um, that is pretty much it. Thank you, sir, for joining me on this fun. discussion. No, it's always Appreciate fun. it. Um, and we're going to try to do more of these discussions, and we've got to bring in other people, too. Definitely. On these when we can. Um you know, to talk about these topics, but uh, thank you. I would always love to get another perspective. Yeah, that. definitely, definitely. Um, modem, if you hear this, you need to give me your schedule. Damn it, been too long since you've been on the podcast or anything. I have to figure that out. Anyway, thank you again. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time on Wise Guys Discuss. Everybody, later.